and we are live. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Guy here. Welcome to this new live today, Sunday, October 5th. Oh, sorry, November 5th, 2023. I'm glad you're joining me here. Today, we're going to talk about your public IP address and sec the security risks that come with what you put out there. If you have your IP address, for example, being uh, shown in public, like it happened to me a couple of days ago, what would be the risks and what can you do to mitigate those risks? And I'm glad you're joining me today on Facebook and Instagram. For those of you that are on, on YouTube, I'm sorry, Facebook and YouTube. If you're on YouTube, make sure you leave a small comment. Also, make sure you like the video, you subscribe to the channel if you like these kind of videos. My name is Guy and I'm here to share with you most of what I know and what I'm learning in the tech field. And I can help you start or boost your career in this field. So if you like that, make sure you give me a thumbs up on the video. Hi, Serge, I'm glad to see you in the comment. It's been a while. And if you are also on Facebook, make sure you liked the video on Facebook, you publish it in your Facebook feed, and you also share it as well. So I was saying that last time I made a video, let me try to find that video here. I have my, I have my screen in front of me. I'm trying to find that live video and I'll show you what exactly happened. I was sharing my screen in the video and, uh, KB training. So let me just show you the screen here. So it's one of my my video in French. So I think it was this one here. So I was talking about about my home network and the, the updates that I'm going to do in my home network. Uh, by the way, I'm going to show you the same thing. I'm going to make a video in English about the same update to my home network sometime this week because I have a bunch of devices here as you can see this is a new a new 40 gate that I'm going to install um, in my home network and I was waiting for this rock mount um, equipment to be delivered so it was just delivered we're gonna talk about it a little bit at the end of the of the live stream but it's going to be used in my home network as, as well as this switch that I have right here so all of this will be presented to you in my next live so if you like that make sure you like the video and also you subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any of my future videos and also i'm still working on my studio last sunday i was not live because i had a lot of a um, lot of things going on at least today my studio is up and well and i have a bunch of cameras set up just to make sure you have the best quality so please encourage me by liking subscribing and leaving a nice comment it's gonna go a long way. Thank you so much, guys. So I was saying that, uh, let me find that place in this video, somewhere over here. Let me show you. Somewhere over here, I was sharing, yes, right here. So I was sharing the screen of uh, my uh, UDM SE. And if you can see right here, you can see my public IPs. This is my WAN1 port. And this is the one two. So these are the two public IPs I have. And yes, people started freaking out in the comment. Hey, Guy, your public IP is out there. We saw it. We saw it. Okay, that was good. But in the live, I said that it's not a problem. It's not good, but it's not a problem. But today I'm going to tell you specifically what is or what are the risks if you get your public IP exposed like this and why you should keep them private or keep them to yourselves. Unless you have a service that you are offering to the world, then you can make your public IP public because it's supposed to be public anyway. So we're going to discuss, we're going to discuss what are the risks if something like that um, happened to you. And I also have these risks here. This is a list of things that we're going to cover today that are going to be what happens if you ever get your public IP exposed. And uh, this is the list we are going to cover. In my case, I'm also going to tell you what I did not to get vulnerable or not to get attacked what did i do after my ip were exposed and that that's something you can do as well to make sure that you are secure when you get your ip um your ip exposed all right i am sure everything is going well on youtube it's all excellent thank you guys so let's right jump in so your ip address is your gateway to the world that's the IP you use every time when you go online because your private IP is going to be uh, translated to the public IP. And I'm talking about IPv4 here mostly. So it's going to be translated to a public IP that you're going to use all over the internet. So it's some sensitive inf information that you, you need to keep private. Otherwise, you are a target 
everybody knows where you are on the internet and they can target you specifically. And that is the first vulnerability or the first risk here is to get some targeted attacks. So if I publish my uh, public IP and you can see it like you saw in the video, you know where Guy is online. So if you, are to com if you want to compromise my services or if you want to attack my network, you can use that IP and get to me right away. And that is a problem. If you are an enterprise and you are hosting a website inside your company, for example, you need to have a certain IP that is public that you can expose to the world so people can see where you are and can, go, um, can come connect to your server. Even though there are many services that you can use today, like Cloudflare, where you can hide your real public IP and they will use their own public IP and they will deal with the security part of it. But if you are um, um, hosting your website yourself inside your company and you are exposing your public IP, you can become uh, a, a, a target and that can be a problem unless you configured your firewall in the best way possible to avoid all those attacks. The second thing that can happen is that you are going to, uh, people are going to exploit your vulnerabilities, which means that people will try to scan your network or your public IP to see if there are any ports that are open. Because through an open port, they can get into your network and they can do a bunch of things. So an open port can be a vulnerability. At some point in my home network, I had RDP turned on because I had to connect to my Windows computer at home at all time. So I had to expose my public IP and open a port to the RDP. And of course, I didn't use the default 3389. I had to use some random port. And then I'm going to map the same port to the 3389. But from the outside... Anybody can connect, but also I had some extra measures just like uh, um, like uh, IP filtering, for example. I had to make sure the IP that is going to connect to that port was already listed or whitelisted in my FortiGate. And by the way, at the time I was using a FortiGate, and one of the main reasons I was using the FortiGate was because I kind of noticed that I was my, my network was being scanned all the time. You know, I make videos here on YouTube, and um, I see that it can be a vulnerability if my public IP is exposed, and then people are trying to scan it. Mostly it was some IPs from Ukraine or Eastern Europe. They were scanning my IPs. And I said that in that first video where I was installing the FortiGate. Uh, by the way, talking about the FortiGate, just like I said, this is going to be my new device. Right now I have a new DM, uh, a UDM SE, but a new one, a new FortiGate is being installed sometime this week. So you have to find a video on this channel when I publish it. So if you have your public IP known, People, hackers will always try to see if there is any vulnerability to get in your network and steal or log in or grab whatever information they can get from you. And I am a private, I'm a residential user, so I don't have a lot to expose. But if you are a company, you need to make sure that everything is on point when it comes to security. Otherwise, it can be a great risk. The next uh, the next risk is that your location can be tracked and you can also be profiled. This means that your IP address will tell where you are. Of course, it's not going to give your exact address, but it can give somebody the region that you live in. So by because that's the way the IP addresses are assigned by the entity that is supposed to do it. I think it's, uh, I forgot the name of it, I... Uh, IANA or something, it's been a while. But they give those IP addresses to uh, manage uh, to ISPs or internet service providers. And the internet service providers will give you those IPs and you can use them. So they know exactly what area those IPs are being used. That's why if somebody has your IP address, they can track and get the area where you live in. And you can also be profiled in a way that they can also target you with some specific ads, for example. It might be benign, but it can be something if people know what region you are, and then they can spam you with ad or things that are for that specific region, and that's something you don't want. You want to be anonymous online. That's why some people use VPN, for example, because with a VPN, you can use a public IP that is not directly linked to you or to the area you are living in, and uh, that's just some good security measures. So I hope all is, all is going well on uh, Facebook as well, as well as YouTube. All right, so the next thing is um, brute force attacks. Let's say somebody scans your network 
and they see that you have maybe let's say SSH port or RDP or FTP or any kind of service open and that's something for them that's a, that's a honeypot that's that's some um, some place they can try to get in they will try to brute force that service and get into your network and take over like you have RDP they can try to RDP and if they have a chance they can land into into your your windows login page they'll try to brute force the password to get access to your network and if you have not um, configured your security properly it will become a problem because with today's technologies it's very easy to brute force any simple password that's why it's very recommended to have a complex password so that if somebody is trying to brute force it it's it's going to take a while maybe by the time they get it you already find out that you are being attacked and of course if you have a good firewall that's something that you can notice um, inside your network and again i'm going to take, give you the good the two reasons why i was not worried with my ip being uh with my ip being exposed hello from norway oh glad i'm watching i'm glad you watching me from norway that's a great thing thank you so much for joining us live and if you are not live i go live on sunday around uh 4 p.m new york time so make sure you like uh, the channel i mean the video subscribe so that every time i go live you are notified so the last thing is the surveillance and uh monitoring if you have your ip public People can start tracking you and monitoring your activity online because your IP is directly linked to you and they can dress a whole profile about you and know what you do online, when you do it, at what time and all of that. So you need to avoid publishing your public IP because people out there that are malicious can use that against you. Okay, those are the risks. But at the same time, I... It's usually best to have the highest level of security inside your network. It's usually best to have the maximum security. But it doesn't mean that you need to build some kind of paranoia or thinking that as soon as your IP is out there, you are in trouble. Somebody's going to get in and do something. And for me, for myself specifically, when those IP addresses were exposed, two reasons were the reasons why I was not really freaked out so i was not afraid at all and i said it in the chat i'm like yeah it's fine it's going to change anyway because the first reason is those ips were dynamic they are not static ips that i paid for those are ips that are provided to me by a service uh, by an isp with a dhcp server so it can change anytime my lease expires how does that happen if you know about dhcp when an ip is provided to you it's given a lease time Let's say for a big ISP, it might be six hours, for example. So after six hours, if that IP is not being used, it's going to be taken by the, by the DHCP server and given to somebody else. If it's still being used, it's going to um, belong to that same device. And in the past, I thought your IP changes only if you reboot the device, but sometimes it can just change on itself, on its own, it changes, and you have a new IP now. So because it, because it was dynamic, I knew that if I unplug my cable from the WAN connect uh, from the WAN port, and I keep it down for a certain length of time, I did like 15 hours because I have WAN one and WAN two. So I unplugged WAN one and waited for hours, and then plugged it back. I had a new IP, and the old one was reserved. I mean, was uh, taken back by the ISP, and they can give it to somebody else to use it. So you might be attacking that IP, thinking it was me, but it's actually somebody else with a very different network. That's, that's the first thing. And if I had static IPs, a static IPs, you usually pay for them because they are given to you, they don't change, and you can get identified to the world through those IPs anytime. And I'm also going to make a quick video on this channel talking about um, DDNS or dynamic DNS because it's a, it's a service that I use all the time to make sure I know what's, what's my public IP. And that's something you can leverage if you have an IP that changes all the time and you want to have access to your network or to uh, activate your VPN from anywhere, you can use the DNS. It's coming sometime this week. That was first. So I did it for the WAN1, I unplugged it, and then I um, unplugged the WAN2 after WAN1 was plugged in. And by the end of the day, or a day later, I had two brand new IPs that nobody knew online or on YouTube, and uh, it wasn't a problem for me. The next thing is that I have a firewall. If you have a good firewall and you configured your firewall 
at the best of your ability, it's going to protect you against some of the attacks. Targeted attacks like DDoS, where you have a lot of devices coming to get some resource on your network or to talk to your security appliance, that will be a problem if you have billions of them coming because your appliance will be busy responding to those pings or to whatever, whatever they're requesting on your network and your service can literally be down. But if you have a good firewall, it can detect a DDoS attack and it's going to mitigate the attack by blocking those IPs one by one or by taking any kind of measures to make sure that the DDoS is not going to bring your service down. And also today, most of the modern ISPs have a way to identify DDoS and to block it before it even reaches you. It can reach you first and then they identify it, they block it. So there are many ways that can be put in place today to uh, avoid being a victim of your public IP being exposed out there. But it's still a good measure to keep it private if you can. But if it's public already, you either have to change it or you use some good firewall rules to make sure that, let's say you have a web server behind the firewall, only the web traffic will be able to go through and no other traffic will bypass um, your 40, I mean, your security. I said, I said 40 net because that's going to be my firewall really soon. And um, yeah. All right, guys, that's, that was the whole message I had for you today. And uh, I'm glad you, you joined me live. I'm also um, going to publish this week, sometime this week, I'm, I'm, go I'm going to publish the new design of my home network. And that's something you can... Um, you can use to know exactly the kind of configurations we're going to use or to do on the 40 gate. If you, if you have any kind of new configuration you want me to cover, do not hesitate to let me know. And by the way, I want to mention that I have a CCNA course on my kbtrans.com. It's currently in promotion because um, it's being produced. So the course is at um, kbtrans.com for slash CCNA. If you, do go, if you go there, I go from zero to engineer and I teach you all you have to know to take and pass the CCNA exam, which can help you start to boost your career in this field. It's a very non-exam or certificate that will be very helpful. All right, guys, uh, if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments. And please don't forget to follow me on Facebook and, and Instagram, where I show you the behind the scenes and everything I do in my studio here. I actually just bought a new desktop for these lives here. Right now, I can stream directly in 4K when I'm also recording internally on my device, which is something I was not able to do before, but I'm doing all of that to bring you quality content all the time. So make sure you like and you follow. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye.